before you had. Yeah, this is it. Are there any senators who wish to change their votes or to vote? Did the, did the majority leader have his vote? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, hearing none, the ayes are 38, the nays are 52 under the previous order, requiring 60 votes for the adoption of this amendment. The amendment is not agreed to. Under the previous order, there will be two minutes of debate equally divided prior to a vote in relation to amendment number 3435 offered by the senator from Oregon, Mr. Merkley. Mr. President, Mr. President, could we have order? Yes. Order, please. Mr. President. The Mr. senator President. from Oregon. And please. Mr. President, we're going to have two more votes tonight. They'll both be 10 minutes in duration, in addition to the debate time that's already been established. Then we're going to move in a very direct way to complete as much of the debate time on the amendments on the supplemental. It's extremely important we get this debate completed tonight so we can start voting in the morning. We have already set up, we're going to have a, some votes in the morning. We're going to come in probably about 9.30 and start voting. We have a lot to do. It would really be good if people who have amendments on the supplemental use your debate time tonight. We're going to have no more votes tonight, but tomorrow there's going to be a limited amount of debate time. So, um, Senator, Senator um, Mikulski uh, will be here tonight. Senator Schumer will be here tonight. Senator Menendez will be here tonight to help move this in addition to, of course, that manages the bill on the other side. So we hope that people work hard to get the debate out of the way tonight so tomorrow we can vote. We have a lot of votes tomorrow. We, I'm led to believe that there are a number of amendments the managers of this legislation will, will pass either by voice or in some other quick fashion. Mr. Leader, Mr. President, Mr. President. Senator from Maryland. Uh, following up on Leader uh, reads comments to my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. If you have these amendments, Senator Schumer and I would like to know uh, that you stay here this evening to offer and debate them as you were accorded under the unanimous consent uh, agree. If you come up and tell Senator Schumer and I now, we can get an order and a sequencing and tell you when we can call you up. We like very so instead of everybody standing around, we would actually get a regular order. You would know when your amendment's coming up, in what order you're coming up, so that you could plan your evening. Uh, and so please see Senator Schumer and I, and then we'll work with you to accomplish this. Mr. President, uh, I yield the floor. Mr. President. Uh, the Senator from Oregon. Will there be order, please? Mr. President, uh, is it time to uh, speak to Amendment 3435? The, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I rise in support of the Merkley Lee Amendment. I thank him for being lead co-sponsor. Please take your conversations out of the chamber, please. Colleagues, this is all about supporting the Fourth Amendment and opposing secret law. As we all know in this nation, law consists of both the plain language and of the court interpretations of what that plain language means. In the case of the FISA rulings, the public never finds out the second half and therefore doesn't really know when information can be collected, if you will, uh, that is uh, relevant to an investigation. No one ever knows what that means. The public should be able to know and should be able to, to weigh in. This amendment is constructed so it is, protects national security, it says this will only happen in cases where it's compatible with national security to release the uh, FISA uh, findings. And second, it can do summaries instead, and if summaries are still causing a national security problem, a schedule is sufficient of how the, the administration is reviewing these. Balances national security, but fights for the Fourth Amendment. I urge you to support it. 
The Senator from California would like order, please. Senator from California. Mr. President, the Vice Chairman of the Committee and I oppose this amendment, as does the Administration. Again, we have only four days to reauthorize this intelligence tool before it expires. And sending this legislation to the President without amendment is the only sure way to do it. The, the Director of National Intelligence is engaged in an ongoing process to declassify significant FISA court opinions where it is possible to do so. I have agreed to work with Senator Merkley to get summaries of FISA court decisions that can be made public. In sum, the intelligence community strives to be as transparent as possible with the public, but legislation that would force its hand and potentially risk the exposure of classified information is both unnecessary and unwise. I urge my colleagues to oppose this amendment. All time has expired. The question is on the Merkley Amendment. Is there a second? It, there appears to be. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka. Mr. Alexander. Ms. Ayotte. Mr. Brasso, Mr. Balkas, Mr. Beckage, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Bingaman, Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Blunt, Mr. Bozeman, Mrs. Boxer, Mr. Brown in Massachusetts. Mr. Brown of Ohio, Mr. Burr, Ms. Cantwell, Mr. Cardin, Mr. Carper, Mr. Casey, <laughs> Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Coates. Mr. Coburn. Mr. Cochran. Ms. Collins. Mr. Conrad. Mr. Coon. Mr. Corker. Mr. Cornyn. Mr. Crapo. Mr. Dement. Mr. Durbin. Mr. Enzi, Mrs. Feinstein, Mr. Franken. Mrs. Gillibrand, Mr. Graham, Mr. Grassley. Thank you.
Mrs. Hagen. Mr. Harkin. Mr. Hatch. Mr. Heller. Mr. Hoven. Mrs. Hutchison. Mr. Inhofe. Mr. Isaacson. Mr. Johans. Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin. Mr. Johnson of South Dakota. <laughs> Mr. Carey. Mr. Kirk. Ms. Klobuchar. <laughs> Mr. Cole. Vote. Mr. Kyle. Ms. Landrew. Mr. Lautenberg. Mr. Leahy. Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez, Mr. Merkley, Ms. Mikulski, Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mrs. Murray, Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, Mr. Nelson of Florida, Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, Mr. Reed of Nevada. Mr. Risch. Mr. Rockefeller. Mr. Rubio. The old dude. Mr. Sanders, Mr. Schott, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Sessions, Mrs. Shaheen, Mr. Shelby, Ms. Snow, Ms. Stabenow, Mr. Tester, Mr. Thune, Mr. 
Mr. Toomey. Mr. Udall of Colorado. Mr. Udall of New Mexico. Mr. Vitter. Mr. Warner. Mr. Webb. Mr. Whitehouse. Mr. Wicker. Mr. Wyden. voting in the affirmative. Akaka, Baucus, Beckage, Bingaman, Blumenthal, Cantwell, Cardin, Harper, Coons, Durbin, Franken, Gillibrand, Heller, Klobuchar, Leahy, Lee, Levin, Manchin, Merkley, Murray, Nelson, Nebraska, Hall, Reed of Rhode Island, Schatz, Schumer, Shaheen, Stabenow, Tester, Udall of Colorado, Webb, and Wyden. voting in the negative. Alexander, Ayotte, Barrasso, Blunt, Bozeman, Brown in Massachusetts, Burr, Casey, Chambliss, Coates, Coburn, Cochran, Collins, Cornyn, Crapo, Enzi, Feinstein, Graham, Grassley, Hagen, Hatch, Hoven, Isaacson, Johans, Johnson of Wisconsin, Johnson, South Dakota, Carey, Cole, Kyle, Lieberman, Luger, McCaskill, Mikulski, Moran, Nelson of Florida, Portman, Risch, Roberts, Rockefeller, Sessions, Shelby, Toomey, Bitter, Warner, Whitehouse, and Wicker. Mr. Menendez, aye. Mr. Udall? Mr. Udall of New Mexico, aye. Mr. McCain, no. Mr. Mr. Conrad, aye.
Okay. Mr. Reed of Nevada, aye. Mr. McConnell, no. Mr. Corker, no. Mrs. Hutchison, no. Mr. Pryor, Mr. Pryor, aye. Ms. Landrew, no. Are there any senators wishing to change his or her vote? Hearing none, on this vote the yeas are 37, the nays are 54 under the previous order requiring 60 votes for the adoption of this amendment. The amendment is not agreed to. Under the previous order there will be two minutes of debate equally divided prior to a vote in relation to amendment number 3436 offered by the senator from Kentucky, Mr. Paul. Mr. President. The senator from Kentucky. I rise today to support the Fourth Amendment Protection Act. The Fourth Amendment guarantees that people should be secure in their persons, houses, and papers against unreasonable searches and seizures. Somewhere along the way, though, we became lazy and haphazard in our vigilance. We allowed Congress and the courts to diminish our Fourth Amendment protection. There will be order for the senator. Particularly when papers were held by third parties. I think most Americans would be shocked to know that the Fourth Amendment does not protect your records if they're banking, internet, or your visa records. A warrant is required to read your snail mail and to tap your phone, but no warrant is required to look at your email, your texts, or your internet searches. They can be read without a warrant. Why is a phone call more deserving of privacy protection than an email? This amendment would restore the Fourth Amendment protections to third party records, and I recommend a yes vote. Mr. President. Senator from California. I oppose this amendment, as does the Vice Chairman, as does the administration. 
This amendment is not germane to FISA. It has not been reviewed by the Judiciary Committee, which would have jurisdiction over this matter. It seeks to reverse 30 years of Supreme Court precedent interpreting the Fourth Amendment. According to the administration, and I quote the DNI, the amendment would severely limit the effectiveness of law enforcement authorities at all levels of government and will effectively repeal the FISA Amendment to Act. I urge a no vote. Uh, the question is on the Paul Amendment. Is there a sufficient second? There appears to be. There is. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Akaka. Mr. Alexander. Ms. Ayotte. Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Balkis. Mr. Baggett. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bingaman, Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Blunt. Mr. Bozeman, Mrs. Boxer. Mr. Brown of Massachusetts, Mr. Brown of Ohio. Mr. Burr, Ms. Cantwell, Mr. Carden, Mr. Carper, Mr. Casey. Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Coates. Mr. Coburn, Mr. Cochran, Ms. Collins, Mr. Conrad. Mr. Coon. Mr. Corker, Mr. Cornyn, Mr. Crapo, Mr. Dement, Mr. Durbin, Mr. Enzi, Mr. Feinstein, Mr. Franken,
Mrs. Gillibrand, Mr. Graham, Mr. Grassley. Mrs. Hagen. Mr. Harkin, Mr. Hatch, Mr. Heller, Mr. Hoven, Mrs. Hutchison. Mr. Johans, Mr. Johnson of Wisconsin, Mr. Johnson of South Dakota, Mr. Carey, Mr. Kirk, Ms. Klobuchar, Mr. Cole, Mr. Kyle. Ms. Landrew. Mr. Lautenberg, Mr. Leahy. Mr. Lee, Mr. Levin, Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Luger, Mr. Manchin, Mr. McCain, Mrs. McCaskill, Mr. McConnell, Mr. Menendez. Mr. Merkley. Ms. Mikulski. Mr. Moran, Ms. Murkowski, Mrs. Murray, Mr. Nelson of Nebraska, Mr. Nelson of Florida, Mr. Paul, Mr. Portman, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Reed of Rhode Island, Mr. Reed of Nevada, Mr. Risch. Mr. Roberts, Mr. Rockefeller, Mr. Rubio, Mr. Sanders, Mr. Schatz, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Sessions, Mrs. Shaheen, Mr. Shelby, Ms. Snow, Ms. Stabenow, Mr. Tester, Mr. Thune. Mr. Toomey, Mr. Udall of Colorado, Mr. Udall of New Mexico, Mr. Bitter, Mr. Warner, Mr. Webb, Mr. Whitehouse, Mr. Wicker. Mr. Wyden. Senators voting in the affirmative.
Baucus, Begich, Cantwell, Heller, Merkley, Hall, Stabenow, Tester, Udall of New Mexico, Webb, Wyden. Senators voting in the negative. Akaka, Alexander, Ayotte, Barrasso, Bennett, Bingaman, Blumenthal, Blunt, Bozeman, Brown of Massachusetts, Burr, Cardin, Carper, Casey, Chambliss, Coates, Coburn, Cochran, Collins, Conrad, Coons, Corker, Cornyn, Crapo, Durbin, Enzi, Feinstein, Franken, Gillibrand, Graham, Grassley, Hatch, Hoven, Isaacson, Johans, Johnson of Wisconsin, Johnson of South Dakota, Kerry, Klobuchar, Cole, Kyle, Landrew, Leahy, Levin, Luger, Manchin, McCain, McCaskill, McConnell, Menendez, Mikulski, Moran, Murray, Nelson of Nebraska, Nelson of Florida, Portman, Fryer, Reed of Rhode Island, Reed of Nevada, Risch, Roberts, Rockefeller, Rubio, Schatz, Schumer, Sessions, Shaheen, Shelby, Thune, Toomey, Udall of Colorado, Vitter, Warner, White House, Wicker. Mr. Lieberman, Mr. Lieberman, no. Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee, aye. Miss Snow, Miss Snow, no. Mrs. Hutchison, Mrs. Hutchison, no. Mrs. Hagen, Mrs. Hagen, no.
there are senators in the chamber wishing to vote or to change their vote? Seeing none, on this vote, the yeas are 12, the nays are 79. Under the previous order requiring 60 votes for the adoption of this amendment, the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. President. The Senator from Maryland. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent. The Senate now resume consideration of H.R. 1, the legislative vehicle for the, San for the Sandy, Hurricane Sandy Supplemental. Is, is there an objection? Without objection. The clerk will report. The, the bill has been re reported. Mr. President. Senator, Mr. 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 President. Chamber will come to order. Please carry your conversations outside the chamber. Mr. President, I'd like to give a sense of the order of amendments so senators may plan their time. So if we could, could we ask for order. Senate will come to order. We're now back on the supplemental bill, and we have great cooperation in getting the pending amendments and debate uh, done this evening so that we could actually start voting this morning. So that senators can have an understanding of how we'll start our work this evening, I'm going to lay out a bit of the schedule. Our, this is not a unanimous consent request. It's kind of an outline. Our intention is to have the following amendments called up after I yield the floor. Senator Cardin to be recognized to call up his amendment 3393. Senator Tester to be recognized for two minutes on amendment 3350. Senator Landro up to two minutes on amendment 3415. Senator Coburn to be recognized for 30 amendments for six amendments, 3368, 69, 70, 71, 3382 and 3383. Following that, Senator Merkley to be recognized up to five minutes to call up his amendment. And then I have a few that I will offer if senators are pending. Mr. President, uh, I yield the floor. The President. Senator from Maryland. Mr. President, I would call up uh, the card amendment that was made in order 3393. The clerk will report. The Senator from Maryland, Mr. Cardin proposes amendment number 3393. Mr. President, th this amendment is totally non-controversial. Uh, in the bill, they increased the surety bond limits for small businesses from $2 million to $5 million. It was an amendment I worked with with Senator Landrieu from the Small Business Committee. It was included in the Recovery Act. It expired. And it's been very, very successful. It's generated a lot more contracts than anticipated. Making the limit permanent has no cost. This amendment would strike the provision from this bill since it's already been included in the National Defense Authorization Act, which has passed this body, at six and a half million made permanent. So there's no need to include this provision in the supplemental appropriation bill. I know of no controversy in this amendment. We don't need any debate time. And the I'm Senate is not in order. Please carry your conversations into the cloakroom. I'm hopeful we'll just clear this for a voice vote tomorrow. I want to thank Senator Landrieu for her work, Senator Snow on the Small Business Committee, and thank Senator Mikulski for the courtesy. Mr. President. Mr. President. Wait, wait, wait. Senator President. from Montana. Wait, before the Senator <coughs> from Montana speaks, uh, I would... Uh, why don't we voice vote it now? <laughs> Offer it. The request for time, and uh, I'm, I'm prepared for the vote. I yield the floor. There is no further debate on the amendment. All wait, those wait, in favor wait, wait. say aye. Aye. Wait, 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 wait. This, with the chair would withhold, there seems to be. Mr. President, could, if you got order, I think it would be helpful for us. Senate will come to order. Senator from Maryland may proceed. I, I, I have no further uh, debate. Uh, I'm prepared to let the question go on voice vote. There, is there any further debate on the amendment? Uh, 
uh, inquiry of the chair, Mr. President. Senator from Oklahoma. It was my understanding we were going to have ordered votes tomorrow rather than this evening. Yeah, I would ask through the chair, the chairman of the uh, <coughs> committee, that uh, it, it, Senator it, from Maryland. Replying to the gentleman from Oklahoma's request, for those amendments for which we know we can, we've cleared on both sides of the aisle, that we can do by voice votes or by consent, we're going to get those done this evening. Does the senator have an objection to that? Well, I would on this particular, uh, I think we ought to have a recorded vote on this. Uh, that would be my request. So, the um, Senator Cardin's amendment, uh, 3393, will be voted on tomorrow. Mr. President. Senator from Montana. Mr. President, I'd like consent to call up uh, amendment number 3350. The clerk will report. The Senator from Montana, Mr. Tester proposes amendment number 3350. Mr. President, uh, Senator Udall of Colorado and I will offer this amendment uh, to provide the Forest Service with sufficient resources to meet the demands of wildfires fighting this fiscal year. Our amendment to the Sandy Supplemental would close the gap between the budget request and the actual expected need for wildfire management this year. Now, over the last 15 years, the cost of wildfire suppression has increased fivefold, but the Forest Service budget certainly is not. The reason we have wildfires, uh, the suppression increasing by fivefold, is because the frequency and severity of fires have both increased. The Forest Service instead has had to borrow money set aside for non-fire purposes, cutting into important programs such as timber production and watershed, rec watershed restoration. Barring against other accounts is occasionally unavoidable, but is generally bad policy. We have a chance to avoid this situation by adopting my amendment, number 3350. The West experienced its worst fire season in decades this past year. Over one million acres burned in Montana alone. Over nine million acres burned across the country. Three states had major emergency disaster declarations due to fire. We cannot afford to get caught unprepared this coming, su this coming summer. Nearly one-fifth of the West remains in extreme or exceptional drought, and over 60 percent of the high plains remain in extreme or exceptional drought. Uh, let's be prepared and let's be responsible. I would urge a yes vote on this amendment tomorrow. With that, I yield the floor. Mr. President. The Senator from Maryland. I rise in support of Amendment 3350 proposed by Senator Tester. These funds are needed because the agency predicts it will spend more to fight these fires in fiscal 2013, uh, causing severe hardship on the agency as it withdraws. I ask unanimous consent my full statement be in the record. Without objection. Mr. President. The Senator from Louisiana. Mr. President, I rise to discuss Amendment 3415. It's my understanding that there's no opposition to this amendment. We may be able to voice vote it tonight, but let me take a minute to explain it. Under, in the, this is really a technical correction to an underlying provision that is already in the bill that we'll be voting for. In the current law, there is a perverse incentive for local governments when they are recovering to hire outside contractors as opposed to maybe working with the workers that are already on the payroll, firefighters and police officers. It was not intended to be that way. But because FEMA only reimburses for contractors and not for the local police or firefighters under certain circumstances, we believe, and FEMA believes, it's actually spending more money. So the essence of this amendment is to save money, be neutral in the law, so that the local officials can make the best decisions wherever they want to hire either contractors, if it makes sense, or their own people, if it makes sense, so the recovery can go more efficiently and hopefully save money. FEMA supports it, the firefighters support it, and it's really technical in nature, which is why I asked the chairwoman tonight if we could voice vote it. I don't think there's any opposition. I say to the gentlelady, um, we've been advised that we do not think we'll be voice voting amendments tonight, uh, but I want to uh, just comment that we support the Landro 3415 amendment. 
uh, which clarifies the intent of Section 609E of the pending amendment to provide FEMA re reimbursements for the first responders. This amendment clarifies the intent that first responders can be reimbursed for wages during a disaster response, but it does not change the conditions of reimbursement that already, that already aid in an effective disaster response. We do want to re reinforce that the National Association of both firefighters and their fire chiefs support this amendment. At such time, when a vote is taken, I will urge an aye. And I'd like to technically call up the amendment if I could. The staff reminded me I didn't do that. 3415 and submit for the record two letters from the International Association of Fire Chiefs and the International Association of Firefighters. Without objection, the clerk will report the amendment. Senator from Louisiana, Ms. Landry proposes amendment number 3415. Without objection, the items will be placed in the record. Senator from Oklahoma. I'd ask for the chair if the uh, chairman of the appropriation committee would uh, like for me to begin calling up amendments. Yes, and I really wish to thank uh, the senator from Oklahoma for being willing to debate his amendments this evening. I know he has a pressing engagement, and he may proceed in whatever water he so I chooses. thank the chairwoman. <clears throat> Mr. President, uh, a little perspective before I offer these amendments. We have before us a $60 billion plus bill, and there is no question there's great need in response to the devastation that occurred with Sandy. <clears throat> But one thing the American people need to know is this bill goes through the Senate. This bill isn't going to be paid for. There's no amendment that has been approved that will allow offsets for this bill. So as we clear this bill through the Senate, the 60-some billion dollars that we're going to clear, we're actually going to borrow that money. And that's indisputable. Um, I've spent the last eight years outlining the waste, the duplication, and the fraud in the federal government. <clears throat> Those amendments are not made in order uh, that would offset and actually pay for this by eliminating programs of the federal government that don't, don't actually do anything to actually better the lives of Americans. Uh, I'm very appreciative of the opportunity to offer these amendments. I would also note that we could have done these last week had we had an open and moving amendment process. We wouldn't be here today working on Sandy. We would have finished it last week, but we chose not to do that. I would ask that Amendment 3369 be called up. Without objection, the clerk will report. The Senator from Oklahoma, Mr. Coburn, proposes an Amendment number 3369. Strike I section. ask you, unanimous consent that Amendment be considered as read. Without objection. This is a fairly straightforward amendment, and, and this is not to be uh, uh, construed as an amendment against the appropriators, but rather an amendment for transparency. What the underlying bill states is that three days before any grants are made under this process, that the appropriation committee will be notified. Not the whole Congress, not the American people, but the appropriations committee. And the reason for that is so that the members of the Appropriation Committee can then put out the information to the constituencies who are going to benefit from the grants that come through this. Well, actually, the American people need to know the grants that are going to be granted through this process, the money that's going to be spent. And so all this amendment does is change it to where the American people get notified of the grants that are going to be placed as a result of this bill. 
This, this is about good government. This is about transparency. This is about letting all the Americans who are actually going to pay for these grants know what's going on, when it's going on, and how it's going on, who's going to get the money, and how much money they're going to get. It's really straightforward, very simple, and it just says, let everybody know. Not a select group of members of senators or House members, but everybody in this country who is footing the bill ought to know where this money is going to be spent. They ought to know at the same time anybody else knows. And so it, it's just a, a transparency amendment so that we all know where the money spent and we know it at the same time. I'd ask you, unanimous consent that that amendment be set aside and that Amendment 3371 be set up. Without objection. Be called up. The clerk will report. The Senator from